don't forget to intro ourselves eh. <laughs> Cause the last time we didn't. No. So uh, recently I met a friend, right? And uh, who said that he wanted to buy something from Wok Hey. Okay. Okay. So I was like, okay, fine, fine, fine. So when he made when he made the order, right, he asked for less oil and less salt. Eh. I didn't know that was possible. Yeah, that's, that's the first thing, right? You didn't know that was possible. Second thing, why? It's not like Wok Hei is already, it's like using a lot of like heavy seasoning or what. Does he use MSG? No. No, like of course Wok Hei doesn't use MSG. I mean, to be fair, it's not fried rice lah, huh? If you all don't use MSG, that's the, 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 the thing about it lah. Yeah. Okay. In any case, okay, why don't you introduce us? <laughs> <laughs> it is yet another episode of Tapao Please with myself, Wani. And Zat. Yes. <laughs> And today is a bit special because uh, we are trying this thing where every month we try to do one video podcast, lah, mm-hmm. right? Uh, so for those of you who are watching us, you're probably watching us a little bit delayed. So we will put the we will put the podcast the the podcast will go on Spotify first, then the video will come later, lah. So in case you all are watching this like two weeks later, ah, we're gonna talk about some Master Chef thing. So this one is episode three of Master Chef, okay? Yes. Episode okay. three, yeah. But then before we begin, let's talk about our fit. <laughs> You you wanted to just I want to talk about our okay. fit because our fit is like local. Yeah, so this jacket that I'm wearing is from uh Ingood Company Asia, which is a local brand, and the t-shirt is from Beyond the Vines. That's all I just want to do shout out for them. Right. I, I have my pants from also in Good Company, in Good but Company, I yeah. can't stand up. You can't, you can't, you can't. But but then you where where's your mask from, you said? Oh yes, uh Sutodia or something like that. Okay, is it is it like expensive? It looks very uh, expensive. I think twenty seven or twenty nine. Oh yeah. my god! But this part is like waterproof. Congratulations! So when it's raining, your mask won't be wet, <laughs> because it's okay, can. But it's a bit more resilient, lah. So at least when you wash, right, it dries mm. faster. Ah, yeah. okay, okay. I have so many masks at home. Yeah, good for you. Like more than a week's worth, so that I have to keep washing every week. Yeah. Okay. As we all should lah. As, as yes, correct. Should. As we all should. Yep. Okay. So let's start. Let's start with food news for the week, which is Master Chef. Is that Master Chef is the food news for the week? I feel like we're gonna talk quite a, bli- a bit about it. So it is. It is the news. Like it's quite current. You know. It is. Uh, it is. Yes. Okay. Let's do your observation first. My observation, right? It. Episode three was when they were at Fullerton uh, ah, kitchen, yeah. and then they were doing the high tea set, mm. and then one was it the red group got Western and the blue had Asian, Asian. Uh, yeah. Um, it was very frustrating for me because, uh, was it? I'm not very good with names, mm. so I only remember the face of the contestant. Okay, but which team, red or blue? Uh, the red. The red team. Um, Un, I think. Un, okay. He Un. really struggled. Oh my god, Un. You, and I felt so bad Because yeah. like the first two episodes Right We were so hoping for him We were like Oh this is like A for sure Mm-mm. win Like mm. I, I think he's gonna go far yeah. He's very confident He doesn't need to worry yeah. And then suddenly pressure In like a Commercial, commercial kitchen, kitchen right yeah. and, and then he just falls apart. I think I think the issue With that challenge right Is uh, A lot of the chefs right A lot of the contestants right Have never cooked For anything bigger than Two or three Mm. So for them to be cooking like a portion for 60, right, it's a, it's a whole different ball game. Eh. Yeah. If I was them, right, I would, like for example, the lamb one, right, the lamb oh. one works because you don't cook lamb in small portions, mm. right? So you obviously, I think it's Ganesh, I think that's his name. So I, I might be screwing up the names. Ah. So uh, he has been making lamb curry, obviously for, for, for families, right? It's like beef rendang, lamb curry, sambal goreng, right? You don't make it in small batches. So it is okay, it's easy for you. It's actually, in fact, easier to cook this kind of dishes in big batches. Mm. So when you are faced with this kind, this kind of competition, right? This kind of like challenge, right? Where you have to make for like a big, big crowd, right? Then of course it becomes so much easier, right? But then if you're doing pastries, for example, uh, I think uh, he was trying to make a shoe pastry, right? Uh, un. Y- yes, uh, the first attempt was a shoe pastry. Yeah, and the shoe pastry didn't rise. Yeah, for and some it was reason. Uh, very liquid. Like uh, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the consistency batter. is very liqu- uh, is is very different. Uh. So I mean, when you want to make for a big batch of people, right, it is different because the method of uh, beating has to be different. The method of mixing is different. It's a whole different ball game. Uh. So another advice uh, to potential master chef contestants in future, right? If you're going to join, right, try to cook for like a lot of people. Try to cook like whatever you are, whatever you like to cook, right? For a lot of people. So if you like, if your if your specialty dish is like a seafood, something, uh, make a lot and see how you uh compartmentalize your time, lah. Then you probably will do better, lor. Mm. And there was one comical part, uh, where 
I think Va- Vasun was always on the case on of, Trish, Trish. Of <laughs> but Vasun is such a teacher. I mean, you, you've had her on the podcast. You yeah, know, she we, is such a teacher. Yeah, she interviewed her, I think for our second or third episode actually already of uh, season one. Mm. Uh, and yeah. <laughs> she is such a teacher. But then you know, la, this, is, this, this, this could technically be uh, like a production, like how they say it? Like, uh, production cuts, la, like uh, the edits. La, you know, yeah. it, could, it could be but edited. It, it made for a, a good humour because after that, she was like, shut up. Yeah, Trish. <laughs> shut up. Oh my God. <laughs> Yes, but then the, the 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 other problems that I saw, right? Of course, is still the same thing, which is they try to do a lot mm. in a very short period of time, especially for the for the group challenge, right? Where you have to make this number of things, right? And then you you make like all these like very uh, ambitious dishes that require so many layers of uh, of things inside or inside, yeah, uh, so many layers of things inside it that you have no choice but to like really spend time on this. So, I mean. Don't be so ambitious, lah. Really, say like how many, how many, how many uh, high teas have we gone to uh, where the dishes are complex? Don't have. Yeah, usually it's very straightforward. Yeah, it's very straightforward, and it's just like tarts and pastries or sandwiches, yeah. but done really, really well. Yeah, it's just done really well. It's so probably why the the ma- the mutton was it lamb the lamb the lamb curry right? Yeah, the lamb curry did so well mm, because it's yeah it's so easy and it's so easy to eat. It's so easy to make. And, I mean, and like you say, it's in in its nature you already made a big portion. Big portion, yeah. And all and all them curry needs is time. Mm-hmm. Right? So the rumpa and everything is standard, but all you need is time, right? And in that in that uh for that for that for that challenge, they can just literally leave the lamb curry to boil and then while you prepare the prata and things like that, right? Then that's fine. But by the way, right, I love that spring home. Spring home is advertisers. Oh, uh, yeah, right? I know. I they saw are that. really I was like, this is very subtle, but at the same time I know that packet of prata, right? It's from Spring Home, mm, yeah. But then but then when I was watching the advertisements, right, like I realized that Spring Home is really leaning into the whole use our Prata pastries for everything else but yes. as a prata, which is quite good, uh, I think. Yeah. It's it's very rare for a company like this, right? For for a company like for a company like this to to get out of their comfort zone, right? And tell people that yes, we sell prata, but you don't just have to eat the prata as a prata. You can use it to make like puff pastries, and a lot of people have been doing that. Like I see on TikTok, this is you mm. know I'm very obsessed with TikTok. I see a lot of people on TikTok like do making this prata to make like all sorts of things, you know, pastries, yeah. uh, egg tart, egg tart, eh? Yeah, they use it as also like a curry puff skin. Yeah, I've like, seen it. and then I saw someone do it, making it with uh as a as a like 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 you put a hot dog in the middle and then you cover it. Oh. So they will cut the they will cut it into strips and then they cover 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 cover. Oh cover okay. Like yeah. It's like oh, a yeah. braided. Ah, like yeah 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 like a braided pastry. It's quite brilliant, see, this kind of thing. So. Yeah, la, so good job uh, Spring home Spring home So anyway I don't have any tapao item Except for this yakun tea <laughs> But uh, have you Drank your way Through the menu Because I know In season 1 You were talking about Like the possibility Of doing oh, it Since you always <laughs> Go there for your <laughs> Coffee Oh but you know One one of the uh, One of the drinks That I I remember drinking there Which now don't have already right, Is the Soya bean Coffee Oh Yeah they used to have This soya bean with tea or soya bean with coffee, which so is it's like soya, soya soya coffee, soya tea. Oh, it's like a tea latte, but with soya. Soya milk. Yeah. yeah, correct, correct. But actual soya milk, not like soy milk, soya milk. Not, oh my god, I'm gonna sound like a total. <laughs> no, like soya, like soya bean milk. Uh, yeah. Instead of like a soy milk, like a plant based alternative, it's like a soya bean milk. But isn't Soy milk made with soya beans. But I think I think the soya milk is like a different process. I suppose I'm not too sure. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah, but I remember drinking it and here having it like uh knowing underst- uh, like realizing that it tastes really authentically like a like the cup of soya bean from Mister Bean and Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other observations? Now, now you're going uh, to now you're gonna make me want to Google soy milk versus soya, soya bean, bean milk. milk. Yeah. I think there's a difference. Uh. You cannot say that if I use a... If, if I take... For example, we go to Mr. Bean, right? You buy the 0% sugar. You take that co- that soya bean milk and you use for your coffee. Can mm. or not? Why not? Can uh? Okay. That's a good experiment. I mean, I'm sure the taste will be different, but I'm sure you also, it, it fits that purpose. Probably. Probably. Yeah, you can try it. Any, any, other, any observations, about the, observations about the challenge? No, but now, now that... Okay, I'm just going to be... I guess it's a spoiler. So if you haven't watched season, uh, episode 3, uh, I, 
yeah, episode three, yeah. Don't listen any further, lah. Don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you cover your, yes, take out your, 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 your. Yeah, because we're gonna tell you <laughs> the winner, the, the the person who got sent home. Yes. Okay. Which is own. Which is own. <laughs> yeah, and the other person who almost got sent home is Vasun. Yes. Mm, which I, are very strong contenders in episode two. Yeah. The problem with I think Vasun's dish. Okay, we cannot we cannot deny that Vasun is a good cook, right? Yes. But I think given the time constraints, right? I think she should pull back. Right. Given the time constraints, yeah. if you have all the time in the world, right, at home, right, go ahead and do all these things. These are these amazing things that you can do, but you just have to pare it down. Like, really pare it down. I mean, of course, it's great if you have, like, pomegranate this, and this, you have prawn oil this, right? But I think you got to pare it down a little mm. bit more. That's the advice that I would give her. Uh. To contestants uh. It almost feels right You need to uh, If you're really serious About uh, signing up For this competition right? You almost need to Practice at home mm. So you Set different uh, Scenarios up for you So maybe you have Your family members right? Give you a mystery box challenge oh, And then yeah, give yeah. you A time challenge oh, Give yeah, you yeah. a press, uh, yeah, a, yeah, Different things lah. Mm. So at least you're Maybe not it, it won't be the same As on the show But you'll be Comfortable with the, That kind of pressure and the kind of uh, ambiguity when it comes to like the um, ingredients. Are we surprised though that Instra was the first to leave? No, no she's not really surprised. Yeah. It, it's a little sad that it's not a surprise. Because you can, uh, within the first two episodes already, you can tell that she is really there to just impress. But I don't get a sense of what kind of cook she mm. is. Mm. She just wants to do like, so many things yeah, And the best of so many things yeah. But I'm like So but then what What is <coughs> what, what are you as like a home cook As a home I, cook I yeah. really, What is your identity right I can't as a really home get cook. it Yeah neither, neither Neither do I As opposed to someone like Derek mm. For example right Who is such a sciencey mm. person So and even Even to the point where During the challenge right They actually told him like uh, Let's just get Derek to help us uh. I'm sure he has find He can find a way to save this Yeah he situation. was always like The crutch in the yeah, team Yeah which is a good thing la, I suppose yeah. But then that's, the, that's his identity As, a, as a, a cook la, mm. As a home cook And then you even know What Noor is like Ah yes yes yeah. Noor likes to cry I think <laughs> Noor if you're listening To this podcast right Noor you need to stop crying I mean of course It's a bit counterfactual To talk about this now A bit too late But oh my god Noor You need to stop like <laughs> I know <laughs> <laughs> I because I was watching it with Zahir last night and yeah. he didn't watch the first two episodes, so he watched it with me last night. And then he was and then I was like giving him the lowdown on each contestant, <laughs> like uh-huh. the profile. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. He said, and this no right, her thing is crying. crying. <laughs> she has compliment from the judge, cry. She has criticism from the judge, cry. cry yeah. She has a bit of pressure, cry. Mm. Uh, a nostalgic moment where she remembers something about this, cry. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm like, and I think I cry quite a bit. Like, mm. I'm a bit emotional, but I'm like, that's... Mm. A lot lah. Mm. It's very, uh, I think I think it all boils down to like, the whole imposter syndrome thing lah. So, so, <laughs> yeah, mm. I know, which is... The, 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 the other thing that, that, that I thought was very interesting was because this is this is the second time that I've heard someone in the... Some, some, someone, one of the contestants say it. They have pantry blindness. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I know who you told you. Yeah, Leon, 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 yes, Leon. Yes. Yeah, I love it because the last episode when someone had a pantry blindness, he, I couldn't find the basmati rice. Right? Then yeah. the, this this filming editing crew, what they very shady, yeah. It's like doom. This is this is the basmati rice. Right? Same but I like the whole concept of like if you have. That's why when you don't have a lot of time, right? When you are under pressure of sixty minutes, right? You don't have to spend ten bloody minutes in the pantry looking for things. No, it should be something that is easy. I mean, of course, you want to impress, right? But. The best foods that we have had, right, comes from ingredients that are the most, most basic. Mm. We talk about the brewing ground, for example, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's just like uh, patties and eggs and avocado, the avocado tartan, and everything is just so beautifully done, but it's not complex, right? Yeah. yeah, no one can say that it is like complex. But then, if, of course, we have been to restaurants where the ingredients and the, the cooking method is a little bit more uh, elevated, and we did enjoy it. Mm. Right? For example, can say no. I just say lah. Maison Marie. Oh right. What we like the fish. <laughs> yeah, a freaking the prawns. a freaking fish. The prawns, <laughs> which are not like doused in a lot of sauce. And yeah, it's literally. I think the prawns was only it was only grilled and uh, what's the what was the sauce the this green. I can't remember. I have the tasting notes actually. Oh okay. For the prawns, but yeah. it was it was I think a two ingredient or three ingredient kind of like mm. sauce. Yes. And that's it. 
Yeah. And I love parsley I, and garlic oil. Oh yes. Yeah, I said parsley and garlic oil is a great combination that pays off. The prawns are undeniably fresh, plum, and such a delight to eat. I made my dining partner pass me all the prawn heads for ease of suckling. I'm gonna love the prawn head. It's ah. Oh, yeah. See, it's my favorite. It's simple, but it's a simple ingredient. It's a simple method, but then it works, mm. right? So. Uh, then when when Derek said uh, uh, something about his his dish right, and he's like, "This is Michelin star quality." And I'm like, "Have you been to a mi-? okay, <laughs> okay?" Because I've seen like Michelin star quality chefs. I said like dishes, dishes. and it does, it's not like that. I think yeah, <laughs> I don't have to say it without sounding like a cruel person, but like a bit delusional, uh, <laughs> a little bit, just a little bit, yeah. So that's the tea with Master Chef. So if you all if you all have not kept, quite caught Master Chef yet, uh, it's still running every Sunday. You can watch online lah. Yeah, me yeah. watch. Yeah, me watch. Uh, go to me watch. Then every time at nine thirty, I will ha- I will I will drink. I will watch it with like a bo- a, a cup of bubble tea from Liho. I was just about to say uh, bubble tea. Bubble tea, <laughs> but stevia thirty uh, percent. Okay. Mm, of course, of course. Okay. Then the next thing that I uh, I really want to get off my chest, right, right. Is so last week there was a little bit of kerfuffle in mm. the company. So those of you who are following uh, my boss, the founder, Mr. Seth Liu himself, you have seen that he put this very long uh, post, uh, this long mm. Facebook status, talking about uh, someone who complained about our review. Look, okay, and I know this, I, and I have very, I have very strong feelings about this because. How do I say this? Okay, so our publication right is unique in the way, in the sense that uh, we don't shy away from bad reviews, mm. right? Previously, before I came in, okay. Anyway, in any case, before you all don't I don't know who I am, right? So I'm Zad. I'm the <laughs> <laughs> because because people who are watching this video might not know who I am, but for the podcast people, I'm sure we're who's like ya? who's who's who this person? Who's ya, this uh? one, yeah. So for but then but then but then for our podcast listeners, you probably know who I am already, lah. I'm the annoying person. So uh, my name is Zad, and I'm the editor in chief for Sethu.com. Mm. So I'm in charge of curating the publication content. Then Wani is the deputy editor. So Wani uh, is the second in command in case I die. <laughs> or if I'm taking a break, then Wani will just do everything, right? So Wani is more 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 involved in the daily, day to day operations of the publication, like how much uh when to publish, what is the direction of the listicles and so on and so forth. So that's what Wani does. Mm. Yeah. So uh, when I got this this uh this complaint, right? You no, know, of course we do ratings, right? We do ratings on our site. So we rate our there is uh, is a rating from one to five, right? So this has been something that has been in 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 effect for a very long time ever since Seth uh started this publication. Now when he started when yeah. he started writing, right? So he already had this rating, probably la, That's what I think la. So uh of course the best way is for us to remain neutral and just put 333, three, three, right? Mm-hmm. But then if you're talking about the publication, com as a legitimate food publication with authority, right? Authority does not come with uh, threes and fours. Authority comes with, we can tell you, we will tell you that, oh, uh, this place is a two. But of course we say it's a two, but we will say that, oh, uh, this dish is not good, or this dish is not good, but this one is good, this one is good, and things like that lah. Uh, so do, so so what happens with uh, so what happened last week right was that one of our reviews got a threat of legal action, right? Which scared me a bit because it has never happened like mm. it has never happened in my time right since I was here. So uh, I had to ask Seth uh, like what do you want to do with this with this situation. Well, of course Seth of course very cool, very calm, very cool as a cucumber about this whole thing right. But in the, in any case the takeaway that I get from that right and uh, from the status that he shared right is this. You might not like uh, what we write, mm-hmm. uh, but we we have a responsibility to our readers. You are a conglomerate. Most of the places that, not most are like, maybe 20-30% of the places that, places that we review right, are conglomerates. And they are new places and, and we want to tell people, should you spend your money here? Yeah. Would you, uh, should you part money to spend like $50 here and we know now in this current climate money is very tight 
right? I mean, we don't. I don't say make mistakes. Ah. of course, there was that there, there, there are times when we do a three, but then it doesn't feel like a three, you know. But yeah. that one is just an opinion, lah. It's just an opinion thing. Uh, and I have seen people say on online, like on other uh, forums, right? Because I went to research, ah, review dot com reviews, ah. I want to see oh, what people okay. are. I want to see what people are saying about us. And then I see on like Reddit, right? I'll say people saying like, I I don't trust his reviews anymore because his writers are all also very good. Oh, I don't trust this person. I don't trust his reviews anymore because I went once. And then it's not really good. There's so many things that, like, how do I say this? There's so many things that is so, uh, that 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 defines the food review other than what is being uh, written at present. Yeah, yeah. So for example, uh, maybe on that day that we went, uh, okay, yes. it's good. Yeah. Uh, then maybe in two months they change chef. What can we do? Yeah, that's the thing. I don't, I don't think a lot of people realize this. So there's a lot of moving factors when it comes. Yeah, there's to, a lot of moving parts. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, parts. Uh, when it comes to food, because food in itself is, uh, it, it's like an entity that shifts. Mm. It depends on who cooks it, on what day it's cooked, mm. uh, who is serve. It, it's even down to who is serving you. Yeah, you know, or what kind of ingredients you're getting on that day. Yeah, whether right? it's the freshest. Oh yeah, it's just so many things. You mm. know what I mean. So so what we write right is our impression on at that point in time, right? Uh, instead of coming to us right and say like, oh, we don't like what you say about us and things like that. Mm. You in the first place, right? If you if you did your R and D, right, you would have known that this might be a problem. No, but the issue is you were not expecting us mm. to come down and try it and then like. Do say like bad a bad review body lah, but then in that review, uh, that was written right. We didn't just completely diss everything. You no, know? there was one or two dishes that uh the the writer really liked, right? So I like 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 I tell the writers all the time, no place is uh completely horrible, but there's no place that is perfect as well. And this applies to Michelin star restaurants as well. Mm. Right? I mean, I've told you about my experience at you know that yes, place, yes. right? I Which know. has like. Everyone's like, oh my god, I have to go because I had Michelin star. And I'm like, oh yeah, it's okay. Lor. It's alright. It's fine. <laughs> but then I talk, I speak lyrical about places like Cafe Fernet, which is not a Michelin mm. star. I speak lyric, I, I, I wax lyrical about Paseo, which is not a Michelin star. You know, but then no place is uh, is perfect, but no place is so horrible that you don't want to visit. Lah. You don't have to visit. Lah. So before you all like legal threat us, right? You. We have a responsibility to our readers. I think that's the reason why our readers still read us. Yeah, it's yeah. not only that, but also we have a responsibility to ourselves mm. as a business. Like we can't just lie through through our teeth all the time. Yeah. Even though yes, we do have uh, clients who come and uh, you know we work with them to have reviews and stuff. I was listening to last week's podcast when we were talking about the Achuan one. Mm. Then I still get very annoyed by that. I still get very annoyed by that. Like when we do. Like a lot of the things that we we go to do visit all this right, we know what like because we're the ones who have to approve the claims and everything, right? It is we pay ourselves one, mm. right? Uh, so, I mean, I don't know lah. It's very hard. The world of publishing is very hard. The world of food publishing is very hard. And I I I I want to tell our readers out there right who are watching this right that we are trying to be as level headed as possible lah. We're trying to be as fair as possible to all. Uh, food places. We want we want food places to succeed, but we also don't want you to waste your money, mm. right? So some places really, like you know, money is very precious. Eh, now, so be be considerate lah for all these uh places that got they didn't didn't have good reviews from us ah. Yeah, but basically whatever you read on the internet, right? Uh, uh, needs to be taken with a pinch of salt. Correct. Whether it's the truth, whether it's uh fake news, yeah. just take it with a pinch of salt. You don't. I mean, I don't know why it's 2021 and people are taking things wholesale and then running with it and yeah. saying like, oh, they're just like defaming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. You know. In fact, in fact they, are, they, are, they, have, they have been restaurants that we go to right, where they have like very bad Google reviews. Yeah. Like Asap & Co. Mm. Do they have bad They Google? have bad uh, Facebook reviews, right? Because, oh, because you know, of the waiting. Uh, because of the waiting time. But then both of us went and then Wani went on her own. Yeah. Yeah, and we're like, yeah, it's great. My friend also went on her own and she did the whole reservation. Yeah. She she pre-order. paid, she pre ordered and everything. And it was everything was fine. And she's like, Oh my god, this meat is so good. Yeah. You know? So take everything with a pinch of salt. Even the things that we say, you know, that's why we try not to be so uh uh what do you call that? that like like the be all and all Mm-mm. kind of situation. Uh, like Eat here or don't eat here. In fact, I remember there was this one review that you wrote on the publication, right? Where at the end of it, there you put a you put a footnote that said you went back and then you had diarrhea. 
Do you remember? I forgot which. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. But there was one review. Uh, so you said that you went back and then you had diarrhea and then uh, you wanted to tell people uh, to make sure that they, they are aware that like, this is happening. Lo. Yeah. Yeah. I think the whole like going <coughs> back is actually quite a good... Yeah. I, I like that whole... Uh, like double checking Mm-mm. whether the, your first uh, visit was true or was not. Was true or not? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's true. Yep. So that's the thing, lah. That's what happened last week in our food news. So next. And then now <laughs> we have the actual. <laughs> so the topic, the main topic, lah. Okay, if we can even call it main, lah, because now we like to segue, segue, right? <laughs> Uh, but it I is, hope, it is, yeah, yeah. But I hope you all like our ranting, <laughs> our segue ranting. Look, okay, never mind. <laughs> I'm not going to say look. Uh, so the main topic is of course. People labeling places as insta worthy, mm. and why I find that damaging. <laughs> damaging is a very strong word. Why I find that problematic. <laughs> Can yeah, I okay, problematic? Yeah, okay, problematic. Yeah, but I think I'm sure I've spoken about this before on the podcast. I'm quite sure I've spoken about my disdain for people who yeah. say places are insta worthy. Oh, you, I think you 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 mentioned it uh briefly but we didn't expand on it like when we were talking about uh words that uh you know people should retire when it comes to describing food and food places mm. it's the whole insta worthy thing mm. what are your thoughts uh, i mean it did, i mean this was a topic that i chose but this was a topic that you wrote on our little keep notes <laughs> it wasn't me it wasn't you it wasn't me it wasn't you no, it was, it me, was uh. you which oh. is why i wanted you to take oh that okay lead. okay yeah yeah okay so my 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 thing with that right is of course first of all if you're still using the word insta worthy right you definitely belong to a certain demographic certain age group lah. Mm. Mm. okay for sure uh you probably belong to the group of people who actually still look at instagram right as a place of it's a place where beautiful thing resides right great we like beautiful photos i also like beautiful photos but then being in these industries being being in this industry when i look at beautiful food photos right i always always take it with a huge pinch of msg <laughs> okay and i do that because uh i i don't trust photos that are taken like so beautifully by uh influencers okay. When I take photos for my food reviews, right, it is beautiful, but it doesn't it it represents the food in itself. Probably like the background is pretty, you know, but I I don't take a lot of effort to like you've seen me take photos uh, on, mm. on for for when when I do reviews, right? And it's always just like one shot, two shot, okay, I'm done. As opposed to some of our ex interns uh, who takes thirty minutes uh, to take one photo and then the end the photo still looks like that. Okay, it needs to be pretty lah, but it doesn't have to be so. Uh, fake, fakely pretty. Uh. can I say that? Fake, fake. fakely pretty, inauthentically pretty. Yes, right. I wanted to find another word for it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. and then and then and then, and then and then of course there are some people, some 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 places who really go all out lah uh, in the whole uh insta worthy thing, right? Because they want to be seen as like an insta worthy place that people can go and take pictures uh. Yeah like, and that's all people will do lor when they go to your cafe. They just take pictures lor. Mm. Yeah, they don't eat the food. They do lah Because they already bought the food yeah, they already bought the but food But yeah. I feel like it takes away The appreciation of what the place is uh, Stands for Yeah Like it It take, it really takes away The essence of the business mm. Like yeah Then people will come here Just to buy the food To take photos But at the end of the day Is that really why You set up a cafe? Yeah For it to be beautiful The longevity of uh, Places like this That uh, that, 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 that depends solely On insta worthy uh, the, 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 the insta worthy moniker Right I've seen so many cafes close because of this, eh? mm. because they just rely on pretty aesthetics. Aesthetics, yeah. hey, aesthetics get dusty, ho. Huh? <laughs> you put that like, beautiful, beautiful plant, plant those plastic, plastic oh, yeah. plant uh, at arches la, all this uh. You put out all this beautiful frame, uh. hey, those things get dusty, eh? yeah. yeah. If you don't clean, uh, your insta worthy become insta dusty. <laughs> oh, so annoying! It's so annoying. That's why when I go to restaurants, right, that has a beautiful view. Yep. Right. For example, when I went to uh, like when we went to one Etico, mm. right? Well, it's so hard to not be blown away, you know, because you're whisked off this like very secluded lift, you're whisked off to this what 50th? 56, I think. 56, 56 floor <laughs> of uh, Ion, right? Yeah. Overlooking the entire streets of Orchard. It's very hard for you not to feel like <gasps> Wow, right? And then you have your judgment impact. So when I go to these kind of places, right, my gut goes up like double, you know. 
You mean your wall? Ah, my wall. My <laughs> your gut goes my up. <laughs> wall goes up. Gut goes up. Yeah. So I I tend to be like double the uh, what's that word? I I tend to be dumb two times more critical. Wow. About the food. Cannot bring into pretty places. Can lah, but I'll be very critical. Yeah lah. La. I will be super critical because I will not be taken by this beauty. Okay. I will not. <laughs> Okay, I know it's pretty. I know you will not seduce me. Yeah, you will not seduce me by this lift that takes me up from ground floor to upstairs in less than thirty seconds, and suddenly, boom! I'm on the sixtieth floor mm. of Raffles. What was what's the that place? Uh, Atikola. Uh, Atikola. One, uh, one Atiko. Oh no, eh, the no. other one. Uh, one altitude. Ah, uh, one altitude. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So I will not be seduced by this lah. So whenever I write my reviews, right, it always starts with that. Like I would not be seduced by this place, ah. You know, of course, it's very pretty, you know. And and when you write about when 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 other publications write about it, right? I hate it when they say like twenty seven insta worthy cafes that you can go to, twenty seven insta worthy restaurants that you can go to. So is the food good? I don't know. No, no. I think they're just then recommending the place based on what kind of photos you can take because the food is a very forgotten aspect of this F and B business which is highly ironic obviously yes, yeah uh yeah but i mean i guess for both of us who are very centered around like the food which is what you are paying for people mm. uh it's very off putting for us lah mm. because i don't i never i mean i think i think you and i can agree when we eat for our own la, uh, at our own leisure mm. like not for work right we don't i mean i i don't take photos i don't take like photos. i <laughs> I really, I actually <coughs> revel in the the reprieve that mm. I don't get to take photo or I don't have to take photos. Mm. I love it that I can just eat. Yeah, I mean, of course, you want to attract uh cl- clients. You, know, you you want to attract customers into this place by like making this place beautiful because it really does put you into the sense of place, right? You're like, hmm, this is very nice, this is very beautiful, and things like that. But it that cannot just be the only thing, lah. Or worse, ah, it's the worthy food. Oh yeah. When when I think this was in uh, tw- I would like to say 2017, 2018, 2018 when yeah. there was like the rainbow the rainbow the cakes, yeah. rainbow things lah mm. uh what what else was there Can you remember like color color in drinks yeah you know like they they were so like the color drop like that I mean come on <laughs> come on firstly I I have no idea why the the color blue or like bright yellow is an appealing food color, food but <laughs> green. Oh, yeah, you know. I mean a beautifully like don't get me don't get me wrong. A beautifully plated food, right, is always appreciated. Yeah, always. if it's in natural state, lah. Like yes. the food itself is it's that color. Correct. Yeah, if it's beautifully plated and it's nice and it's pretty, great. Even better if the food is good as well. Even better, but if it's just pretty. And I've had many of that in Malaysia, you know, in JB, mm-hmm. where I get seduced by this huge ass cafe set with these like flowers and things like that. But the food is so average. You know, that's why I look at it and I go like, yeah, this was very pretty for Instagram and it might bring people in. But you're deceiving your customers, eh? So when you all put when when cafes like this, right, they put good, they go all out and they talk about like, oh my food is very pretty, my food is very pretty, or they just really center or anchor the whole conversation around how beautiful their place is or how beautiful their food is, right? When then come in, right, and then it doesn't match up, that means they're paying for it and then they, they're just paying to take a photo, right? That's a very expensive photo, huh? It's, if your food is like $19, like cafe price, right, it's $19, right? That's a very expensive photo for a piece of square on, mm. on Instagram. Of course, it will bring people in, but then there must be a... A fulfillment of duty. So you bring people in because they be, be because the food is nice. Then after that, they will eat it, and then if it's nice, they'll come back again. Then yeah. they take people. They yeah, the people whole point is back. to have a, a core audience that will return. Yeah. So, but then if people go, then they realize that the food is uh is alright. Then they take the picture, picture, and then the whole cycle just is it just repeats itself. Yeah. So I take the picture. It's nice, but I'm not going to go there again. I'll go to the next cafe. Yeah. You just draw someone else new. Yeah. But that new person also will not come back again. But then why do you think this is such a thing? Like because you know media media is very sensitive to the to the needs of the consumers. Right? Especially since we know that media is very sensitive to the needs of consumers. So why do you think this is still happening? I mean of course in our publication we don't do that kind of thing anymore. La. We don't say like insta worthy. We don't say like uh what for the gram. In insta worthy, Instagrammable. Instagrammable. We don't say those things. I mean this is true, you can go and take a look. Uh yeah. So why do you think that is the case? That is still a thing. Yeah. 
Well, not for our demographic. <laughs> I mean, not for our demographic. Yeah, but then, but yeah. then you still see publications like doling uh, such things out. Because it's the most uh, efficient. Like, if you want a quick response, like a knee jerk reaction, mm. it's the most efficient. Oh, okay. Yeah, it captures attention, and then like I think, uh, whether that atten- attention uh, remains right, they feel like it's not their responsibility. To, oh. to retain that, that audience That is at first You know Lured into mm, this mm. Like beautiful picture Yeah And he said we, we just told you about it But whether it's nice Sorry not a problem Yeah And yeah And I feel like These kind of places They tend to We We are such uh, Like the Singaporean Consumers right We are so What's that word uh? Fleeting No Fleeting Yeah So fleeting Like a new oh. place Pretty pretty Done like like recently I went, I walked past Shatra Mew at Payalibar Quarter Mall that used to have like queues when it oh, first yeah. opened. Ah, no one already. Oh yeah. How how many months did that last? Yeah, like two, three? three. No one already. Done. Right? So but but what what really just really like annoys me the most, right, is that Instagram is no longer for them. Yeah. I was but I was gonna bring that, that point up as well. Mm. Instagram is no longer for just pretty things. Yeah. Instagram is really a good, a, a really strong social media tool yeah. for other bigger, more important causes yeah. than a pretty cafe. People get people get social justice social social justice work done yep. on Instagram, and then with the ten with the ten photos that you can put for Instagram, right? Uh, you can actually do like explainers. You can do so many things, but yet Insta worthy. <laughs> Every time I hear I hear influencers use that, oh my god, it gives me the creeps. Eh. It, it makes really- you wanna like reach. Out and like gives give us like yeah like come on like just flick the ear be like, like <laughs> just flick the ear because if you if you are a food influencer right okay to all the food influencers listening or watching this video who might feel slightly offended first of all calm down right have a tea <laughs> preferably from Yakun Yakun is not sponsoring this uh, but you know Yakun you're the sponsor us you know I'm always drinking Yakun now because opposite of, of our office is Yakun so uh yeah so if you're listening to this and you feel offended right calm calm down take a seat. And ask yourself, do you really want to be seen as a, an authority in food or do you want to be seen as someone who is just pointing out like insta-worthy places in Singapore? Mm. Like, like what is your opinion of the food? Is the food nice? Is the meatballs a little bit tough? Is the meat done correctly? Is the, are the prawns juicy? Are the prawns plump? What is it? Mm. Or is it just a pretty little plate? And is that all that you can say about the place? Not that I'm saying that food influencers have no... Uh, place in Singapore But I feel like If you're going to say That the place is insta-worthy right, Also please talk about the food lah. Yeah. Or, or you could even critique The the decor If you're talking Since you're talking about Like <coughs> the Prettiness of mm. the place You can talk about like How Whether it fits You know mm. Or how they could improve Or something like that Yeah. Or, or you can say I wonder how they're going to Clean this dusty Yeah like give it some re- Be a bit more Reflective la. Mm. Don't just state Things mm. uh, Like process things A little bit Like put a bit of Critical thinking yeah. Into your post yeah, or, 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 or Places Like cafes That have a, a, a wall Where you can take Instagram photos Yeah Because usually Sometimes there's like uh, Like vines and What then, like, and then, in the world And then like A neon sign That has some like You know <laughs> Some very live Love break I don't know yeah. Eat Oh, wow. yeah. You know what You know what I mean It's definitely not my thing That's hence yeah. I know I'm stumbling Of my words But yeah Like a freaking Dedicated wall in Dedicated to Instagram photos Come on lah We're better than that say. We have gotten to, we, we just went through A pandemic <laughs> Okay people We just went through A pandemic And uh, after the circuit breaker Right After phase When first phase 2 started Right It was a hard reset For the entire F&B industry Entire eh. But yet We still have people we still have cafe who just depend on insta worthiness. You insta worthy, insta worthy, uh, but then if your ice cream still got plastic, uh, who cares? <gasps> there. We should not name who. We should not name who, uh, of course. But if you all listen to our previous episode, you will hear me wax lyrical about this plastic that we found in an ice cream. <laughs> yeah. So that's my issue law with, with, with the insta worthy uh, places. Uh. Because mm. first of all, only people like us use Insta Instagram. Like mm. a lot of people now on on TikTok, which I love. You know how I'm. I, I'm I'm sure soon eh, at some point there will be something that you don't TikTok like. TikTok worthy. Oh, sorry. Oh yeah, it TikTok? could be something along those lines, and then you'll be like, y'all need to stop. <laughs> I sound like that old person who hates technology. Ugh, I don't know. Okay. Or young people trends. Yeah, young people trends. <laughs> 
No, but so far TikTok has been quite the trove of uh, information. Yeah, it's, it's true. Yeah, I uh, one of my favorite TikTok right is uh, let me see whether I can play it later. So one of my favorite TikTok right is this lady, uh, this Korean lady, who makes uh, who makes recipe videos, but then she she she, she she's doing the recipe. She's making oh, the food. Oh, I think you shared yeah. it. Yeah, and then she. Uh, and then she, she dishes out. She she talks about uh, like life lessons. Correct. Or like advice. Yep. But she's actually making she's, something. Yeah. 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 That's that's actually a, a very good uh, way to get people to um, uh, interact with you yes. because they will ask about like either your situation, what mm. you're talking about, mm. or like ask for the recipe. Yeah, and the thing is, she has a she has a recipe. She has a recipe thing la there like 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 there is a little uh tab there where you can look at the recipe. Okay, so this is uh, yeah, let me just play the sound a bit. Heals all wounds. They're lying. Some wounds will never ever heal. Like when somebody dies, when one of your parents walks out the door and doesn't look back, when someone cheats on you, abandons you, or even violates you. You're lying yeah. for days. So I show to the camera. You can see that must do like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this person, uh, this person's name is Joanne L. Molinaro. Uh, so her, this thing is always called advice from auntie because she's Korean, oh. right? Yeah, so she does this kind of like uh, advice videos which I love. God, TikTok is such a truth. Yeah, it yeah. is. So I and there's and something for everybody. Yeah. What, whatever your kink is. Yes, whatever your kink is. So my kink is like food. <laughs> oh my. I mean, the algorithm yeah. is very good, lah. Yeah, the algorithm is quite uh, scarily accurate. It's very scarily accurate. So those of you who are not following us on Instagram or on TikTok yet, right? We are selfie.com on TikTok, of course, mm. right? Uh, so just drop us a follow. I mean, if you are slightly older and you don't really know how to do the transition, the bam, the bam, bam, <laughs> those kind of transitions, right? Which I swear only quarries know how to do. Yeah. The bam, bam. Uh, you just download and you just watch, lah. Because the algorithm for TikTok is very good, lah. Yeah. Yeah. So have we have we have we expanded enough about the topic yes. for today? Quite a bit, quite All a the bit. the topics. I feel like I've lost a sense of time because we 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 recorded this in two parts. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like I've lost a tense, sense of time. Yeah. Yeah. Final words about anything? About anything? Let's no. do okay, okay, let's do a summary about what we have spoken today. Okay. So we, we talked about uh Master Chef. Yes. And we talked about the complainer that we got about our review. Mm. And of course about Insta-worthy cafes And why you shouldn't be saying Instagrammable or Insta-worthy anymore You know if one day someone sends me a death threat Because of a food review that we do right? I mean that's, that's how you know You've made it eh? You've made it Now it's legal threat like okay But death threats though Are, are you inviting? <laughs> no I'm just like hmm. I mean of course I'll write an article about it Right Right. I feel for my life But I'll write an article about it lah, for sure Yes Okay and with that we'll sign off on episode 4 Eh, no What are you talking about? No, 5 Episode 5 ah. <laughs> Yes Episode 5, yeah So if you're listening to us on uh, Listen to us if you're, I don't know where you're listening to us from like, I suppose I mean we're on Spotify We're on Google We're on Apple Podcasts so. Strangely enough Not a lot of people f- uh, Listen to us on Apple and Google Google also, like a handful Apple yeah. like nobody For some reason uh, You uh-huh. all really love Spotify Thanks <laughs> Like, like when, yeah. yeah Spotify, if you're listening Invite us now to your studios I don't Wink. mind <laughs> Wink must wing to the camera in oh. the camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and that's all for us. All right, as always, take care and eat well. Bye. Bye.